far would you go to defend something you believe in, to protect something you love? For a young woman in California, the question became, how high would she go? say we're going to cut all the trees down, how do you stop it? Every single time a tree went down, part of myself died. Come to the side that the things that I tried were in my life just to Wait, get no. by on. Police applied pepper spray to the eyes of demonstrators. Encounters like this, between activists and loggers, were becoming increasingly hostile. Less than an hour after this confrontation was videotaped, the enraged logger felled this tree near the protesters, killing 24-year-old activist David Gypsy Chain. This climate of threats and intimidation swirled around Julia as she began. Point when uh, Pacific Lumber put Julia under a siege that lasted 10 days. They show up with security guards and rope off an area around the tree and shine floodlights, and they're going to starve me down. We knew we had to do something, and, and we tried to sneak up and get food. That didn't work because they had security and had lights all around the tree, like just tons of people. And so I was really being assaulted, you know, mentally and physically. They were saying things that I won't repeat about what they were going to do to me when they got me out of the tree. You know, I mean, just really, they were trying to wear me down, and they were doing a really good job of it. Two days after the men pulled out from having me in a seat, the worst storm came. It lasted 18 hours, and it was howling. Ah! It sounded like wild banshees, it's hard. Like that, it sounded like a thousand. The wind was so hard that the platform was tilted at an angle like this. It was just a constant 60, 70 mile an hour wind that had the platform tilted. And then the 90 mile an hour gust would come in, wham, and just fling I worried about it a lot, like when it was raining, when it was cold. Like last winter we had snow and ice up there, like, like icicles hanging off the tree and stuff, and I can't imagine what she was going through when it was like that cold. It's interesting how this experience has taught me about letting go of attachments. And I thought I had let go of all of my attachments. I'd sold all my belongings. I'd been living in a tree for a couple of months at this point. You know, I'd really been proud of myself for letting go. But that night, I realized the one thing I hadn't let go of was my attachment to my own life. And I was trying so hard to stay alive that it was clenched. My teeth were clenched. My eyeballs were clenched. My muscles were clenched. It's like maybe if I just clenched hard enough, I would hold on to my life. And meanwhile, it's just... Whoa! I receive over a hundred letters a week, and I respond to each and every one of them. The longer Julia stayed in the tree, the more her fame grew. She was featured in countless newspaper, magazine, and television stories all over the world. In 1999, she was heralded in Good Housekeeping magazine. People magazine called her one of the 25 most intriguing people of the year. Julia became a celebrity. 
when I was thinking about, okay, if I break the national record, I'll get the spotlight here, it never clicked in my brain that if I was the one to get the spotlight, I'd be the one doing the talking. Hello, this is Julia Butterfly Hill. I top the over 1,000 years. The problem becoming a celebrity or a personality is that people forget that you're a person. I'm not a personality. I am a person. The moon has been here since before white people stepped on this continent. How can we cut something like this down and not think that we're affecting something much deeper than ourselves and our own understanding of the world? I had to give my word to Luna and to the forest, to myself, to the world, that I wouldn't come down on the ground again. I wouldn't walk on the earth again until I'd done everything I possibly could to make the world aware and to bring about some change. People can listen and learn from my experience and not have to walk into a clear cut themselves to be motivated to do something about it. The California and federal governments are negotiating with Pacific Lumber to preserve 3,000 acres of old growth redwoods, known as the Headwaters Forest. Some environmentalists say the half billion dollar agreement doesn't go far enough to protect the redwood forest and its wildlife. A year after I came down, Luna was attacked by someone with a chainsaw and a lot of anger and a lot of fear. Luna became a symbol, and symbols are oftentimes attacked for what they stand for. So that person attacked Luna to try and attack what Luna stands for. But one of the most incredible things that happened is the team that came together to help heal Luna included Pacific Lumber employees who came in over time to create the metal water bandages holding the wound together. Pacific Lumber has a metal shop and it was Pacific Lumber employees who were part of Healing Luna. And one of the things that they told me was, you know, Julia, we don't necessarily agree with what you did, but you all, what you did, you did in an honorable way. And who, the person who did this did a dishonorable act and in so doing made all of us look dishonorable and it's important to us that we try and help because the way that you always treated us even if we don't agree with you politically even if we don't agree with with what you stand for the way that you approached it the way you came to it we can honor that and it was very profound and it still touches me to this day that Luna is still standing and thriving and doing beautifully and it was all kinds of people, structural engineers, biologists, treetop canopy, arborists, Native Americans and Pacific Lumber employees all came together to create the healing community that allows Luna to still be standing and thriving. <laughs>